Good morning. What a start to the day. Welcome to a very, very cold London. It's cold, but it's dry at least. I'm pleased with that. I've literally just got off the train at Sloan Square. Uh, it was suggested yesterday. I'm down yesterday filming an event in London. Not to say event. <laughs> it's supposed to have been an event. For obvious reasons, that didn't go to plan. <laughs> um, so I've come down to, to the city today, stayed an extra night with the aim of doing some street photography. I'm really, really excited because I've just got off the train and I kind of get like a buzz in the first 30 seconds if I see a couple of photographs and I managed to get a few snaps, it gives me this surge of confidence because uh, I'm always nervous when I pick up the camera, especially with you guys watching everything I do, <laughs> I get nervous. Um, but in this video, I'm really, really pleased to be actually out with the Fujifilm X-Pro2. So I'm super, super excited to be using this. And if you notice there, I've got the 16mm 2.8 prime little baby prime on there as well so this is a brand new lens i've only just got this lens so i'm a bit, a bit nervous to use this this um this focal length this field of view because street photography if you watch my channel a lot you'll know that i use a 23 mil fujifilm x 100 v which is a 35 mil full frame equivalent this being about 24 mil is going to be a bit of a challenge because uh, things like vertical lines and whatnot but i thought i'd try this on x pro 2 because it gives me a completely different, uh, an opportunity to do completely different images that I normally take and I want to get some really, really sort of more candid, more funny, more so more spontaneous style of street photography that I normally do. So I've got two lenses with me, the 16mm 2.8, which is at f4 at the minute. Good thing about a wide angle like this for street photography is the depth of field is phenomenal. So even at f4 you're going to get phenomenal depth of field if you focus at like two metres. And the other one is a 50mm f2, one of my favourite, favourite Fujifilm primes. And on the X-Pro2, it might actually be my favourite lens. So that's going to be really good for picking out details. So yeah, really excited. Oh man. Well, that means umbrella shots then, I guess. It started to rain. It said 10% chance of rain. So I'll head back to the, uh, the station because I'm really drawn back to this big blue temporary structure. I think I've got some cool shots there. I'm going to work, this, work the uh, location for an hour. It's still about nine o'clock in the morning, so plenty of time. Um, and yeah, just as well, the X-Pro2 is weather sealed because <laughs> it's going to be needed today, I think. Oh, crap. Yeah, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot with this today. I might try and get two videos out today, and then I'm going to head back to the studio and see, uh, talk to you guys about what it's like to actually shoot with this camera coming back from the X-T4, the X-T3, um, the X-100, because I don't know if this camera's actually dated. I think the X-Pro3 is out, and um, yes, I really want one. <laughs> but there's nothing against the X-Pro2. It's still an absolutely amazingly powerful camera, and it's a joy to use. And it's, I don't think, I would never sell this camera. I would never sell my X-Pro2. It's definitely, definitely, now that I'm holding it and using it, I, I, know, I rem remember how much I used to love this camera to start with and what it meant to me to use. Even though it's not the fastest, with the, with the faster primes, it's a beautiful camera. There's no issues. And you've obviously got an amazing sensor and everything as well. Anyway, I'm going to crack on, get some pictures, um, switch over to the Osmo because it's starting to chuck it down. And I'll see you guys in a minute. I like it. It's different. I like it. Cheers, man. Have a good day. Oh, Hiya. Yeah. Do you mind if I take a picture of your red hat by that blue blue sign? <laughs> uh, is it all right? You stay as you are. Yeah. As it looked that way. There we are. It looks really good with the blue background. I like it. I like it. I'll show you. See what I mean? Asana. The colourful. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Yeah. You've been do, you've done some modelling today. You can say you've done some modelling. I like it. What's your name? Get that corner. Look at that. I tell you what, that is amazing. That's amazing. Look at that. I love that blue. Thank you. Have a good day.
Focus over there. Focus over there. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Orange and blue looks amazing. Yeah, just give me a few and I'll have it. You have that one. I'll get it in a minute. Yeah, perfect. Because I should have them in my pocket. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Thank you so much. Really good to see you. Cheers. Thank you, guys. And, uh, oh, that's good with that. Oh, look at you posing. <laughs> Fantastic. Nice to meet you. What's your name? I love the blue, man. It looks so cool. I might have a bit of that yellow in the top as well. Awesome, man. That's super. Thank you, Naomi. Have a good day. having chat to loads of people, getting some kind of portraits. And who'd have thought you could do portraits on a 24 mil lens? Flipping crackers. I love London though, the people are so vibrant. Um, yeah, I've met some really, 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 really cool people. Now there's definitely, definitely a problem with the uh, electronic shutter shooting in um, whatever lights these are, fluorescent up lights. There's definitely something going on because I've looked at some of the shots and the blue this blue here has got these kind of lines going through, which is really, 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 really upsetting. But uh, yeah, it needs to stay as stealthy as possible. So outside light like this, absolutely no issue. In there, artificial fluorescent lights, definitely an issue. But got some really, really cool shots. I'm um, having a brilliant, brilliant time. And um, what time is it? It's only quarter to 11. <laughs> I'm doing fantastic. It's just such a cool place. So, so smart. Good to meet you. Have a great Christmas, buddy. Take care. I'm having a fantastic day. I don't normally do street portraits. Um, my street photography is very, very candid. I don't tend to pose people, ask for their photographs, really. Um, but I'm having, I just thought I'd spice it up and do something a bit different. Yeah. I can't believe. Um, that you, how many cool shots I'm actually getting with a 24, with a 16 mil, so 24 mil full frame. I'm really, really surprised. And obviously I'm not getting too close to people because you get a bit of a distortion with people's faces and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, just, just nice being able to include a bit of their surroundings and whatnot. I've had a really, really good day. So I'm enjoying doing the street photographs, street portraits. Um, I'm enjoying not getting ran over as well. I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> I'm just having a great day. I will say though, there's two things that are bugging me about the camera big time. And that the back button focus is something that I, I always shoot back button focus. And with the X-Pro2, you just can't find the back button quick enough. Um, I mean, if you're zone focusing, you're leaving it at two meters, it's one thing. But with portraits, when you're trying to get the composition, they get the focus bang on, focus on the, on the person's face or their eye. You really need to hit that back button and get it absolutely tack sharp, especially if you're at like 2.8 or something. And I'm just, I basically at one point had to flick on the switch at the front of the camera to single, to single uh, focus because that will allow me to actually focus on the shutter button. I don't really like doing that, but that's what I've had to do because it went, it was just, especially with cold, numb fingers as well. Um, the other thing is on some of the areas I've been to with the artificial lighting, it's been absolutely atrocious. The banding, because I've been using electronic shutter to keep the X-Pro2 as stealthy as possible. And the banding in is really noticeable on that some of them blue images with the blue backgrounds. I'm really, really, I'm pretty much certain that most of them, a lot of them shots are going to be unusable because of the banding. 
and that's a real real big issue because the x-pro 2 although it's got like the the, the, the nicest sounding shutter we got it on oh, i love the sound of the shutter on the x-pro 2 but to get it stealthy you've got to have that electronic shutter because it's just too noisy but the, yeah, the band in with artificial light is atrocious. So uh, yeah, that's the only thing, but I really, really enjoying using the camera today. Sadly, I wasn't filming when I bumped into this chap. Really loved his character, sat there with a cigar, smoking, with his coffee outside a coffee shop. Really wanted to show you the photographs. I think the, uh, the wide angle lens caught the scene perfectly. Really like these pictures. I really was loving that temporary structure all around the uh, train station, weren't I? It was absolutely addicted. Hope you enjoyed the photographs. It was great, great fun. I think it's probably the first time I've actually spent um, anything like that meant that led the time in one area and so probably a good little idea for projects to find an area that you like and just stay there and just work the scene because I was there about two and a half hours and I, I could have stayed there all day it was really really good uh, especially meeting all those all those interesting people so really really good fun that was might take a, a bit of a new direction with the channel with that enjoyed it it was good if you haven't already let me introduce you to um, F8 Street Photography Magazine da -da. This is my publication, this is my own street photography magazine and you can feature your images in it and your backstory. So uh, on the front there we've got Mark Fernley's wonderful image. Uh, we've got some interviews, so there's a guy from America um, with the backstories behind his images. We've got uh, people from all over the world. Another interview with a chap from Italy. Um, absolutely fantastic. And then lots of, uh, lots of feature photographers, which basically could be you. So you can feature your images in the magazine and then the backstories behind them. So if you want to pick up F8 magazine, I'll leave um, the link to the website in the description. So do jump down there and check that out and let me know what you think. Um, yeah, super proud of that. And thanks again to all you guys that have subscribed. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. It's very, very kind. Right then, the X-Pro2. Now, I think this is a classic camera. I'm going to give it classic camera status. I don't have any right to do this. <laughs> but in my opinion, the Fujifilm X-Pro2 is a classic camera. Now, I think this has got... The, the, there's a bit of a, a, a... If you own the X-Pro1, you're probably going to say, no, no, Gareth, you're wrong. The Fujifilm X-Pro1 is a classic camera. Or if you own the X-Pro3, you'll say, no, the X-Pro3 is a massive upgrade over the X-Pro2. That's a classic camera. Now... It's, it's all about how the camera makes you feel, whether you, how you enjoy using it, how you enjoy the process and everything like that, and the, the fact that it gets you out using it and shooting with it, basically. And I don't think the X-Pro3 is much of an upgrade for street photography because I manual focus and stuff like that, so the focus speed isn't going to be an issue. Um, I love the fact that I've still got a screen on the back of this. Um, yeah, it's just a wonderful camera. Still got my two card slots. It's weather sealed. Um, I just And I really, really enjoy using it. And the X-Pro1 isn't the camera I've ever owned, so um, I know a lot of you guys probably be screaming at me right now saying that you prefer the colours, you prefer the old the old rendering um, of the older, the older sensor. That might be, now I'd like to own one of them just to see what the fuss is about, but for me, the X-Pro2 um, is a camera that I really always, always enjoy using, picking up and just going out with, and I can't believe I've actually left it on my shelf for so long as I've been using my X100V for the last, uh, well, the, X, the X100 for the last couple of years. But yeah, it is a classic camera. It's got everything I need. It's got weather sealing. It's got great ergonomics. Um, it's really fun to use. It's got the two card slots, which I really wish, although there's only one card in them at the minute, uh, which I really wish the um, X100 range would have two card slots. You can get some wonderful primes for it. Uh, this is obviously the 16mm 2.8, which I really enjoyed using. So we'll definitely, definitely be using this lens again in future. Um, the idea of this lens was just force me to take different kind of images actually, so it did work. <laughs> and who knew you could do portraits with it? So yeah, you can get some wonderful compact, tiny little lenses for it as well, and I just think it's a wonderful, wonderful, great, great camera. Uh, funny thing was, when the X-Pro2 came out and somebody had come on the cameras, I think it was, um, put one in my hand and said, Gaff, what do you think of this? I didn't actually like the X-Pro2 at first. I didn't like the ergonomics. I'd never had a rangefinder. Uh, I, I didn't get on with it. 
Don't know why I ended up buying one, but since then I actually love it. I absolutely fell in love with it. I I think they're a beautiful camera and such a such a fun camera to use. And the raw files are still very very powerful and comparable to today. Um, I don't really see how this camera is dated. I think it's still a tremendously powerful camera, and of course it's exceptional value if you're picking them up, especially second hand. They're going for next to no money. So if you're looking for a camera to get street, into street photography and you want to get into the Fuji system, I really strongly recommend the X-Pro range because I just think they're wonderful. Great, great value for money. And in low light, you can flick over to the optical viewfinder, which I really like in low light because I think in low light, the EVF on this doesn't quite hold up against the newer cameras because I'm used to shooting now with the X-T4, the X, uh, X-T3, X-H1, and obviously the X-100V. So I do notice coming back to this, how, how how the EVF res has dropped, drops in low light, but also the slower focusing on the old primes. On the new primes, in, 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 in good light, there's absolutely no issue with this camera whatsoever. I think it's fine. Um, really, really, especially on this 16mm 2.8, this, this was focusing absolutely no issues whatsoever. So yeah, cracking, cracking. Um, so the sensor's fantastic. Everything really, the only, th there's a few things that really, really drive me nuts. That the first one is the back button focus, or I've got to say lack of, because that's the back button. I, I'm a massive advocate of back button focusing. So the camera will go on manual focus there, and then I will um, assign, well, the, the button there is assigned AFL button. So that then, that shutter button won't focus. It will just take a picture. Now, I'll have to focus using that, but if you've got your hand there and you're trying to find it, the amount of times that you, you, you're fumbling around trying to look for it and you just can't find it quick enough. So I, I ended up assigning that AEL button there to back button. And even that was, I just didn't find it comfortable. You can get, I think, this button to back button focus, but I couldn't work out how to do it. Um, so that was a bit frustrating. Um, but otherwise, what I ended up doing was going to single focus, which I really don't like doing, and then actually having the focus and the shutter on that button, which I don't really tend to trust. Um, I suppose it's all right if you're at f5.6 or f8 or something like that, but I'd, I'd much rather back button focus, lock the focus distance, lock the zone, and then I know that all I've got to do is shutter. So um, yeah, for me, that, that the back button focus is probably one of my biggest bugbears on this camera. Now, I really love the sound the camera makes. It is a wonderful... <laughs> I think it's a, a, st a stunning, a stunning... Let me put it on single. Uh, I think it's a cracking, cracking sound. Uh, but that's no good for street photography because you want it in silent mode. Um, so what I did is I assigned that back button there, the push dial, to change to electronic shutter and manual and electronic and then um, so I can now take a photograph and it's completely silent. So it's completely, there's no sound whatsoever when I'm taking a photograph. Now that's wonderful in good light, but then there was some, some occasions where this, the banding, as I was taking like eight frames a second, because this goes up to eight frames a second, it's still impressive today's standard. So eight frames a second, I was taking photographs and you could see the, how the fluorescent lights were changing in the EVF and that was a bit unnerving. So the other thing I'd be definitely aware of is in artificial lights is the EVF. Now, when I used to shoot weddings and stuff with this camera, that was a problem on occasion. But for street photography, you need to be stealthy and you need to turn all your beeps, all your whistles, all your lights, all your flashes, everything off and electronic shutter is absolutely superb especially if you're outside and there's you know there's no artificial light electronic shutter is absolutely fantastic because you could be like that somebody walks past they've no idea you've taken their photograph so yeah very very handy um massive massive bugbear was the diopter that moving always <laughs> always drives me nuts because the amount of times you put the camera to your eye and then you've just got to ignore that the, the evf is blurry because you know that that's probably been knocked it's just, i normally have a bit of insulation tape over there to be honest with you but i took it off for the video and i wish i hadn't so that's normally got a tiny bit of insulation tape uh and just like that one the compensation doll but that, that gets knocked very, very easily, but it's not a problem because I shoot fully manual, aperture there, shutter there, ISO is locked in there, and then um, that doesn't, it doesn't really matter what, that, what, what happens to that. If that gets knocked, it doesn't, it's not, not a deal at all. Now, a, a few people don't like the ISO dial, but you've got to lift it and hold it. It's not an issue for me because I set it and forget it, so I'll get my shutter to, F, to 500, I'll get my aperture to F8, nine times out of ten and then just lift my ISO to, to, to the histograms to the right. Once it's in I don't really have to touch it anyway so that's not an issue for me and I believe you can assign if you wanted to one of these dials to ISO anyway so if you were uh, I think you can 
yeah, I thought, well, I thought, I thought you could. Maybe you can't. But yeah, you can uh, on, on the newer one anyway. <laughs> but to me, that's not an issue. Uh, that ISO there anyway. So um, yeah, wonderful, wonderful camera, wonderful camera, joy to use. And I think with photography, people forget and people get roped into all this technology and you've got to have the latest camera. I'm definitely one of them, I know that. <laughs> uh, but it's really, really nice to have a camera that you enjoy using and you look forward to editing the photographs. And for me, the X Pro 2 is definitely that camera. Now, a very, very small issue for me, just coming back from things like the X-T4, the X-T3, X-H1, uh, the low-res EVF. Sometimes it's noticeable, sometimes it really isn't a big deal, but um, I, that is probably, if, I, if I'm on optical viewfinder, and it's not an issue, obviously, because you're just looking through the glass, but you've got to be careful what lens you're using. So sometimes you're forced to use the EVF. Now, most of the time it's okay, it's not an issue, but I've noticed in low light, the EVF can be a, a deal, but it's, for, it, for the camera's age, it's, because you know the sensor's going to be fine, it's almost like you can ignore what the EVF says. As long as you've got your histogram right, as long as you've got your settings right, the, his, the, the EVF is literally just for composing your shot. It's not that big a deal that, that it's not as good as some of the newer cameras. And I'm not sure if the X-Pro3 is that big of an upgrade in the EVF department anyway. I'm not sure. I uh, didn't get to play with it long enough. So, yeah, I, I, I generally, generally do think the X-Pro2... In 2020 or 2021, because we're coming to the end of 2020 now, this is middle of December, or early December, I don't even know what the date is. Early December, the Expo 2 is definitely a classic camera in my opinion. Let me know what you think. I don't know how in the next five years this camera, the next 10 years this camera is going to be uh, obsolete. I still think it's going to be a phenomenal camera in the next 50 years. I just, as long as it keeps working, I'm still going to keep enjoying it. I'd like it to have better ISO on it. I'd like to be able to shoot a bit cleaner. I'd like it to have better dynamic range on the higher ISOs. I think dynamic range on the higher ISO is better on the X-T4 and the X-T3. Um, obviously the X-Pro3. Pro um, but I think if you're getting the ISO right in camera, it's absolutely fine. And uh, yeah, some of the photographs you've just seen were shot at 6400. So yeah, uh, but yeah, anyway, I'll leave it there. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts on the Fujifilm X Pro 2. Do you think it's a classic camera? And let me know what it is about the X Pro 1 or the X Pro 3 that you think this didn't get. Um, and yeah, I'll see you again soon. Thank you so much for watching, and hopefully you have a good new year. And I'll see you again soon. Take care, guys. Yeah.